everyone and welcome to this pick a card reading which is about money and abundance blocks. So this is a message from your higher self to show you your key to overcoming your blocks to abundance and any limiting beliefs you might have about money. If you just seem to be struggling with the same old lack and limitation year after year, but just can't figure out why, use these messages as a guide to assist you in tuning in to your heart's highest understanding at this time and trust your own inner knowing ultimately. Close your eyes. Meditate on the choices available. Pile number one, pile number two, or pile number three. Okay, if you picked pile number one, you have got a lot of stories about money. You've got a lot of ideas about what it means to have money, what it means to earn money, what it means to be powerful because you have money, what it means to be disempowered because you have money. There are lots of stories in your mind about what sort of people have money and how they use it and also some stories to do with right and wrong and guilt and there's even a religious factor I feel involved in all of this. So you have a lot of thoughts in your mind that are telling you why you shouldn't have money. A lot of unconscious thoughts telling you why you shouldn't have money. And I feel a lot of these stem from past lives. So what you have in your favour is that you do actually recognise that you have a lot of feelings about the positive benefits of having money. For example, you believe that wealth is health, that you are, you can be um, you can look after yourself better if you have more money. You can have a healthier lifestyle. In other words, you, you don't have to do horrible, toxic, um, debilitating jobs. You don't have to um, do jobs that are, are boring and stressful to the same extent. You can buy healthy, life-giving foods and supplements and you can afford to go to a gym or to a dance class or do something else that, that helps with your overall fitness. You might have time for fitness. And I feel that those things are very attractive to you. So that might be a way for you to put yourself into a better mindset about money. That might be a little trick you can play on yourself. So in other words, you can incentivize yourself to overcome some of these limiting beliefs by focusing on some of the goals you have for health and fitness, not just for yourself, but also for those you love, those around you. So that's on the positive side. Your relationship with money and the lessons that you had to learn, you really had to learn how to go outside and reach out to people, how to be less cloistered. I feel for some of you coming to this reading, you've had lifetimes where you were, you were very wealthy, but because of that, you became very insular. Maybe you were a part of a family that was that kept very much to itself, kept all its resources to itself and enjoyed those resources. And you've come into this lifetime with some guilt about that and also with the the karma or the choice to learn what it feels like to have to reach out to people, um, sometimes to have to reach out for help, but also a part of your nature is wanting to do some sort of work that enables you to reach out to help people to heal some of that those lessons from the past and what you're learning at the moment is that that doesn't mean that you have to punish yourself that doesn't have to be punishing and the action that you need to take to heal your financial situation now is to express a great deal of compassion towards yourself, whatever that means. Be very compassionate. Find a way to do some of the clearing and the healing so that you come back to a place of self-love and self-forgiveness about those issues, even if they're not conscious, even if you don't believe in reincarnation, even if you don't understand any of this. Just find a quiet space and meditate on being really compassionate passionate towards yourself about anything that you've ever done, said, thought or believed about money in the past. And remind yourself that it's actually okay to be powerful. A part of you just associates money with power and just doesn't want to have anything to do with it. 
And on the other hand, there's a part of you that really wants to be your very best self and to be really um, healthy and fit. Health and fitness seems to be important to this group. And you want to have the finances to be able to facilitate that, that growth of your physical vessel and the expansion and the joy and the enlivenment of that vessel. But at the same time, there's this tension, there's this pull between that desire and your belief that money is power and power is bad and I can't trust myself to be powerful and I don't want any of it anyway. So those are your main blocks. Those are the main areas that I see around you that you might need to work on or meditate on or chant about or just try to find a way to come into alignment and balance with yourself about. All right, I hope that helps. Take care. Bye. Okay, if you picked pile number two, you're currently trying to come to terms with your relationship with money in regard to being yourself. You're wanting to find a way to have money and to be yourself. So, and I know that sounds like the thing that everyone would want, but it's it's something to do with being trapped in a situation where you have to uh, keep going along this path or you feel you have to keep going along this path in order to keep some stability in your life but you're beginning to wake up to feeling that this actually isn't quite right for you anymore and that is impacting how you see money because you're getting to the point where you see money as something that traps you rather than something that liberates you. So the more you remember who you are, the more you're going to want to break free from that trap. And that's where you are at the moment, wanting to break free, wanting to have the resources to break free, and also being quite resentful towards money for trapping you in the first place. So that's one big thing that you're going to have to heal. You're going to have to realize that it's actually not money that's the trap. It's a consciousness that needs to change. You need to start finding time and space to think and figure out your next steps and decide what really needs to change for you to actually make friends with money in a completely different way, to see it as something that can actually set you free to do what you want to do. For some of you, you've got counselling skills or there's something, there's some other path that you could go on that would lead you in a whole other direction, a way that you could open up to receiving more because it's almost as if you have a little bit of a program or a pattern that says, I need to give more in order to allow myself to receive. You're, you're sort of doing, you, you're kind of playing beneath what you're capable of. You're not really uh, fulfilling your potential just yet, but you have had some inspirations about how you might be able to do that. It might involve study. It might involve a little bit of a risk. But one way or another, this idea that you're trapped by money needs to be healed and you need to liberate yourself by possibly, possibly, and this is your own free will choice, by possibly doing something that's a career that opens your heart more and that makes you more aware of the dynamics between giving and receiving. It doesn't mean that you're right, that you need to be self-sacrificing before you deserve to receive anything, but it means there's something your soul is trying to learn about how it feels to give and to receive in return the full value for what you give. And I feel for a lot of you, the situation that you're in at the moment, that isn't even a a relevant idea. It's like you're just doing something that pays the bill, whereas your soul wants you to feel the exchange. It wants you to feel the energy exchange. So that's something that will be getting healed if you want to open up to more abundance in your life. What you need to know is that you are being comforted throughout this journey, throughout what feels like a possible transition into a new career or a new idea. It feels quite dramatic. It could be a new structure in your life, um, reorganizing your resources somehow. And it does feel as if it's something that could liberate you in in some way. And it feels as if your soul is calling you to do this. Your higher self is asking you to do this and to trust that it will work out okay. But of course, it's going to take planning and and precision and forward thinking but also um 
Understand that some of the ideas that you have have come from the fact that you've never really allowed yourself to lean on the universe or on anyone really or, or anything and trust that you'll be taken care of. And, and this is another aspect that you need to consider some way along this path that perhaps there's a part of you that needs to surrender control, allow yourself to receive and then open up to a whole new energetic dynamic of giving and receiving. Okay, I hope that helps you. Okay, if you chose pile number three, you're currently in a situation with money where you know exactly what's going on because you're beginning to get some impulses and some guidance and some intuition about what you need to do next to change things. So on some level, you've really just come for confirmation because you're trying to find a way that you can live your life at your highest passion and still be okay. And this reading seems to be saying that what you need to do is to embrace all of your gifts and talents. You have a lot of gifts and talents. And for some of you listening to this reading, that is one of the problems that you've been a bit scattered and that you think that that's what's caused your uh, lack of, of focus with, with bringing money in. But actually, it's the opposite. You do need to use all of those gifts and talents, but you need to use them in a much more structured way. In other words, you need to focus on what these core beliefs are that need to be healed and and then start to transform them through action. And one of those core beliefs is you can't get what you want and earn money. You can't do what you love and earn money. And that if if I was to say what's the main thing this person, these people need to look at in this group, I would say that it was that. And you needed to learn really that it's okay. Well, you need to learn that it's okay for you to have what you want. You need to believe that that is possible. It's so simple. I almost think the reading's over in just a couple of minutes. You also need to understand that money is not actually safety or security. It can contribute. Obviously, if you have money, you have a safe, warm place to sleep at night and, you know, you can take certain things for granted that will make you feel safer. But ultimately, you're here to live a life at your highest expression of who you really are. And you're, all the money in the world is not going to compensate if you become so stressed out by not doing what you came here to do, that you can't even function properly or enjoy life. So it's it's kind of what's just come into my head. And I'm sorry if it sounds a bit religious and you're not religious or spiritual or anything. Well, you, you're here. So I'm going to take certain things for granted that you, at least there is a spiritual element. I've just had seek you first the kingdom of heaven. And for me, the kingdom of heaven is your true essence where you connect with the God of your understanding, your true inner self, where you find peace and meaning in just existing. And if you can express that at a much higher level by just doing what feels to you like your calling, then you will feel a lot happier, you'll feel a lot more motivated, and it will help you to overcome some of those blocks and beliefs. Because it's not until you actually see yourself doing it that you're going to believe that it's possible. And I feel that to some extent, there's been a, that scattered feeling has been a way to avoid taking responsibility for the fact that you can have what you want. It's It's been, well, if I spread myself too thin and I do a bit of this and I do a bit of that and a bit of this and a bit of that, then I don't get anywhere. It's okay. But what you need to do is to have an overall structure and an overall aim, a single aim that you want to reach using all these gifts to get you there. 
And that clarity will be the same as having one goal to focus on. And when you have that goal to focus on, just sit down, journal, meditate and decide what that overall goal is and how you're going to utilize all these gifts and talents to get you there. And you will have a lot more clarity in terms of overcoming these beliefs. So in a sense with you, it's not about um, doing any work to release those blocks. It's about taking action and having a clear plan and moving ahead with it and trusting yourself, trusting that you can make it happen and that you can see it coming to fruition. And that will help you to overcome those blocks. Okay, you just need to believe in yourself a bit more. All right, that's it. I hope that helped you. Bye. (music) 